Welcome back. My name is Seth. Thanks for watching my videos. This is part two in a series of how to set up and configure Cisco 5510. So in the first part, we went through the process of doing a factory default. Then we went through and set up the outside interface, the inside interface. We set up a dynamic net and a static route to the gateway so the ASA have access to the internet. So in this video, we're going to set up an inside route, static route, to a layer 3 switch on the inside of the network, and how to set up a, an access list, along with two static NAT statements. These NAT statements will take internal IP address and give it a public IP address. Uh, in our case, we're going to be using a web server and, and an SNMP server. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is um, make sure that everything looks okay. Okay, let me just clear the screen. Okay, so we're going to just quickly ping Google, make sure that the internet's working, and it is. We're able to go out to the internet. So suppose, say, you had a internal layer 3 switch. If you look at my previous videos on how to set up a Cisco 3850 layer 3 switch, which is acting as a router, which sits behind this uh, ASA, which is doing and also doing all the uh, the routing. So we need to be able to uh, for the traffic to be uh, from the ASA to be able to get to the layer three switch and let it handle everything. Then, so in order in order for us to do that, if you remember in my previous video, we created an, uh, a static route to the outside to the gateway. Or we're going to create a static route on the inside. To our layer 3 device. So for that we're going to type, we're going to go into config mode and type in route inside and would we want to route inside? Well all of my VLANs and my switch is on the on a private 10.10 .10 uh, network, so I'm going to type in 10.10.0.0, .10 .0 .0. it's a 16 bit. And I want the router to take care of that. Well, the way the router, my layer 3 device is set up and connected to this firewall is on a 10.10.11.2 IP. Okay, so now I set up my route. So if I come over to my ASDM, this was our this was our outside route. If I hit refresh, and there you go, this is the inside route. Inside 10.10.0.0 and the gateway IP is 10.10.11.2 because that is the layer 3 switch IP. Um, IP. Now if you notice, we did that through the CLI. Now that we've created our inside route, then the next step would be to create a, a access list. Okay, so to create an access list, we can do it through CLI or through the ASDM, and I'll show you both. So let's assume that you have an SNMP server, which has a public IP and it's NATed, and it is receiving traps from all over the country. So what you want to do is create an object first. So we'll create an object here. So I'm going to create an object real quickly called SNMP. And the IP address for that is 10.20.32.50. I'm going to hit OK. So we have an object right here. I'm going to create another net object, uh, uh, another object, and call this 
object sn sn mp ext for external okay and the ip address for this is let's assume it's an external ip so 12 12 12 dot 16 yep 12 dot um, 18 and we're gonna hit okay so i've created two objects one has an internal uh, ip And the other one has an external IP. So well now we need to net these two. The easiest way to do that, you can either come here and use a net and use this net uh, wizard, or the way I found it to be the most easiest is if I double click on the object, the inside object down here. We, we see net. If you click on it. It expands this bottom section we have where we can input the net properties you click on the check mark uh, choose the type of net it's gonna be a static net I'm gonna click on these three dots and from here I'm gonna choose the external net you double click that shows up down here click OK click on advanced well it's going from the inside interface to the outside interface I'm gonna click OK click OK and there you go it created an a static net for us, an inside outside static net. So now we have given this server a public IP address. Well, the next thing we want to do is create an access rule that specify what type of traffic can hit this external IP. For that, we can click on access rule up here, and we're going to highlight outside here, outside, click on add access rule and we're going to say source anything going to and that is your inside your inside IP hit OK and the only thing I want allowed is UDP slash SNMP SNMP UDP slash SNMP traps 160, uh, 161 and 162 and you hit OK and there you go so now you have an access rule that says hey I have an SNMP server which if you hover your mouse over this it tells you that it's, trans it's being translated to SNMP-EXT uh, in external and the only traffic that's allowed on it is SNMP uh, UDP 161 and 162 type of traffic and that's it we're gonna hit apply and save it so we create so now what we did was create a NAT statement a static NAT from inside to outside object and then we created an access rule on a 5510 so if I click on uh, my NAT statement here's my NAT statement and here is my access rule. The way it translated everything on the back end is if you type in show run include access list. So as you can see in the background, it created an access list called access list outside access in. It's extended, it's permitting UDP traffic on anything from anything. And it's going to the object SNMP, and the object group is the UDP names, the UDP ports that we gave, and it's using threat detection statistics, which is um, a, a built-in feature um, that detects any threat um, from the outside on this access list. Translated this down here. Okay, so now we're going to create another one here, and we'll see how it populates in here. Okay. So let's say you have a web server. Object network. And this is going to be a worldwide web object. Here, we specify the IP address by typing in host. If I hit question mark, we can specify the IP address. The IP address that I want to give this server is 10. 10. Sorry, 10. 20, 30 dot 15 hit enter we're going to create another object 
called World Wide Web External. And what I'm called, you can give this an IP of 10, um, 12, 12, 12, uh, 15. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into my first object. And here I'm going to type in NAT inside, outside. It's going to be a static net, and I want to uh, static this to object www.ext. Okay, now if we bring over our ASDM and we hit refresh, you'll see that we'll have a static net created. There we go, so now we have a static net created. So now that we've created a static net, we're going to do what we did with SNMP. We need to create an access list. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go back to ASDM, type in, kind of clear this up a little. To create an access list, we have to go into config mode and type access list outside access inside give it a name and it's going to be an extended and we're going to permit uh, TCP because HTTP is a TCP protocol so TCP from anything going to object www created and the port we want is what World Wide Web right HTTP and hit enter and then once we specify that once we create access list we have to apply it to the uh, to this new outside access and um, interface uh, on the outside interface so we're going to type access group I'm going to specify the name that we gave it, outside access in and it's going to come in on the interface outside. So now if I come here and do a refresh we should see an access rule applied on the outside interface it's going to object www specifying to only allow HTTP. There we go. And if you click on edit, it takes us back to what we did earlier with this object. So there you go. So now we have two NATed IP addresses. Additionally, in here, we have something called public servers. Because we made these internal servers public, if I click on public servers, there you go, it automatically puts it into this category because it knows this is a public server. Public server, and so all, all your public servers will show up here. Fairly simple. Okay, so this is how you would set up an access rule and setting up NAT on a 5510. Thanks for watching.